Welcome to Put a Word on It, a podcast presented by Men of Valor. In each episode, we're going to talk with a different man, but each one with a unique journey from brokenness to freedom. I'm your host, Rudy Kalis. I spent over 40 years as a TV sportscaster, then retired and joined the Men of Valor program as a volunteer. So join the conversation. Reconciling men to God, their families and society. Welcome to another edition of Put a Word on It, brought to you by Southwestern Investment Group. They are so wonderful to our program. We thank them so much for what they've done. This is a real thrill for me and a real something I've really looked forward to. Philip Carlson, the son of Karen and Carl Carlson, who started this organization. And yet Philip is in a story in himself. He has brothers, three other brothers with him, and Philip had his own struggles. And see, you always think about the fact, well, Carl Carlson started this program. The child should be a perfect model. Nope. God has a way of teaching us all. I want this young man to go through some of the same difficulties and find out for himself what it's like to truly trust in God above. So I love the time we spent with him, and I think you will too. Here's Philip. Philip, what in the world was it like having (laughs) you being Carl's son? Uh, Yeah, my dad, man. Uh, What was it like? He was, uh, it was intense. He, uh... He knew how to get his point across. So, um, I mean, it wasn't always easy being his son. I knew, I knew that, um, I knew he had, he played an important role in a lot of people's lives. There was always people around. There was always people calling. Um, there was always kids, other kids. Uh, I had three brothers. I still have three brothers as well. But um, growing up, there was always other kids. He always... He always brought kids around everywhere. He uh, he had a passion for it. There was uh, he just helped people all the time. It was um, but it it was tough too because um, you know he didn't put up with any any crap. So he he coached me in baseball and in basketball, and uh, so we we play the games and we practice as a team. But there was also practice one on one all the time. Uh, it was it was. It was, uh, I guess, I guess the word would be intense, and but I knew I was loved and cared for. Um, he didn't, he didn't, um, he didn't have parents growing up, so I think he kind of learned as he went. Um, Is it kind of like being a preacher's kid, where everybody expects you to be a great little guy, and boy, I'm telling you what, and your dad loves the Lord and works with all these men. Now you better live up to that, boy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Some people would call me a preacher's kid, but my dad wasn't a preacher, but a right. minister. Minister. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. There was some pressure there. All right. But he's a strong willed guy. Yeah. You had to have some of that in you. Was yeah. there any, was there a point in which you said, I'm I'm, I'm bucking this horse a little bit? Absolutely. And how yeah. did that work out? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work out great. Not at all. Uh that happened. For sure. And uh, a lot of consequences, negative consequences came from that. Give me some idea if you don't mind. Yeah. So incarceration. For what? At an early age. Um, First time I got arrested, I was 13 or 14. Then first time I did time, I was 15. What what did you do? I stole stuff. But you knew you were Carl Carlson's kid. (laughs) He probably broke your dad's heart because here he came out of that trying to tell men not to live that way in his own son. Yeah. Yeah. That had to drive you crazy inside, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, was- no, it did. It did, yeah. Um, so, yeah, those thoughts, I knew. I knew um, what he did for a living. So and, why uh, do you think you did it? Well, so the reason yeah, I was doing drugs, hi. The reason I did drugs at first, because it was fun. Um, you know, I had a good time. Uh, felt good. Stuff like that. So it wasn't trying to be a rebel. You're just having a good time. Uh, a little yeah. bit of both. A little bit of both. I think the rebel stuff was, um, so, yeah, the drugs was having a good time at first. The rebel stuff, I don't know why. Really, I, re- I rebelled, but I did for sure. And, like, I think there was, there was some, um, you know, I don't want to talk bad about my dad at all, but there was some, you know, there was some forced as far as the athletics go, I mean, it was forced. 
a lot of it. You know, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. And then also, not just that, but church. Um, a lot of things were forced. That mind, your, mind your P's and Q's you represent and all of that stuff. All right? that stuff. This is how it's done. Yeah. You know, there's no there's no options. This is what it is, and this is how we're doing it. So that's probably where the rebellion came in. Like, Tell me about mm. what was your mom like? She's got a different personality, different spirit. How did she handle that stuff? Yeah, so my mom, uh, she was with it too, though. I mean, she's got a different personality for sure. But in some in some regards, she was she was the tough one, really. I mean, she felt she believed the same things. Like, you know, this is how this is how it is. And uh, you know, this is what we're doing. And your dad said it, and I'm behind him, and they were a team. There wasn't any like hey mom, dad said no. Well then no, you know. You can't play one parent against the other. Yeah, a lot no, of kids grow up that way. Yeah, they weren't going for that. I've I've I tried. I'm I'm sure I tried, but yeah. they weren't they weren't going for that. No, All right, no. 15, incarcerated. Yeah, 15. Trou incarcerated. Troubles after that, or did you learn from that? Or? Uh, no, I didn't learn. <laughs> I didn't learn at all. I got out and immediately, immediately right back at it. Yeah. How did it change? How, when do you, and how do you wake up? Oh, so I woke up this time, you know, 20 years later. I'm 36 now. So um, this time it was hard time. The other times... You know, it just wasn't that hard. It wasn't, I'd go away for for a couple of years, three years even, and uh, it just it just it just wasn't that hard. I don't know why. Um, it was still a game to me, even being you know in my thirties and late twenties, and it was still. I just wasn't ready to get serious yet. I don't guess. And then um, this time, you know, the Lord gave me what I needed. He didn't obviously put me in jail, but he set me down. I believe, and. This time I did three years in a county jail where you don't leave. You're in a room about like this, probably a little bit smaller, and uh, you don't leave. I didn't leave for three years, you know, this box. It's what I needed. So um, it was a hard time. That's what I needed. I never want to go back to that. Um, it got me in the word seriously and uh, sat down and, and – my relationship with God grew. My relationship with my family, an authentic relationship, it grew just over the phone. But it grew because I was sober-minded, finally. You know, you go to prison, and there's drugs everywhere. You go uh, even even doing some county jails. And where I was at, there was nothing. And so I was forced mm -hmm. to get a sober mind. And that's what I needed. That's what I needed. Where were you when your dad suddenly passed away? I was out. Thank God. I'm great. I'm so grateful. So I went to prison. I got out in 2014, March, March 2014. My dad died October that year. So those six months, I was sober for those six months. Uh, I spent time, I got to spend time with my dad. We went on fishing trips together. We Every single Sunday. I was over there. We watched the Cowboys. My dad was a Cowboys fan. Yeah. This was when the Rams were un I mean, not the Rams, the Seahawks. Nobody could beat the Seahawks at home. Cowboys went up there. I think they went like 16 or 17 straight in the Seattle, something like that, over two seasons. Dallas went up there and beat them. Um, that was the that was the Sunday. My dad died on a, a Monday night, I think. Tuesday morning, I went up, you know, I got a call. And so that Sunday, before that, it's usually all of us over there, me, my brothers, my mom, my dad, everybody. That Sunday, it was just me, my dad, and my mom. And we ate steak, and uh, we grilled salmon for the next day, and we watched the Cowboys beat the, beat the Seahawks. And then, the, you know, he died the next day. Wow. Yeah, so those six months, and it's unbelievable, really, because, I'm I, like I said, I was in prison, right? And um, I'd gotten in trouble. And I was supposed to finish this program in prison and get out when I completed the program. Well, I got in trouble and I could have gotten kicked out of the program. And looking back now, for some reason at that time, the counselor showed me grace and uh, they let me, they let me stay and they put me off for 30 days. So I was supposed to get out in February. Instead, I got out in March, but it could have kicked me out and I wouldn't have gotten out. And my dad would have died. We wouldn't have had those six months together. And, you know, I would have died. He would have died with me being in prison instead of him getting to see me 
you know, for a short span, but still he got to see me, you know, live life. I bet there. you felt from him that he had forgiven you uh, uh, for all that happened. Oh, I felt that immediately every time anyway. Man. What about like yourself? That. Could you forgive yourself for, for letting them down and the things you had done? Have you <laughs> been able a, to do that? Now, yeah, now. Um, it took, that, that, that took some doing, yeah. I know, I know, I know that no, nobody that loves me holds anything that I did against me. So that helps. I think that helps me. Uh, but there's still regret. Sure. It's definitely still regret. It's a lot of years, a lot of, a lot of wasted years. Look at the power of everything you have learned the hard way, but you're kind of like your dad in that way. And now the way you can feed into these men, you know, I'm so curious. You know, we call the program, put a word on it. I yeah, just yeah. can't wait. Yeah. What's the word that's in your mind? So my word, yeah, yeah. Um, gratitude. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. I know. So, because I know, man. <laughs> Of where I could be, where I should be, really, but really where I could be. What I've done, I mean, you know, if I, if I got caught for everything, which people say that, but you know, mm. if I got caught for the things I did, definitely wouldn't be sitting right here. Of course, I could be dead doing the things I was doing, but also it comes down to uh, my mind still works. I'm still physical physically able uh, my mom's told me forever you know if you have your freedom and your health you know what else you need right so to still be healthy and for my mind to work the way it does after doing what i've done to my body and uh putting the things in my system that i did i'm grateful every day and then to walk around this ridge you know i love this place they'll have to they'll, they'll have to make me leave i love this place no they you're not leaving they, they, <laughs> these men need you yeah. Need you so much. Man, I love spending time with you. Thanks so much. Yeah, for sure. Well, let me put a word on it. I, I, first of all, the smile. Just the smile on his face. I, I felt like that's what Karen has. And I told him, you use that smile to just touch people's lives. It's so genuine. And gratitude. You have to be that way if you're if you're Philip. From all that he's been through and all that he's learned and all that he can now pass on, there's also that wonderful line that God can't use you greatly until sometimes you've been hurt greatly. It's changed his heart. It's now given him an insight that these men can relate to, and he carries on through the wonderful tradition of this family. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next time as we put a word on it.